Oftentimes throughout history, we see major wars that although bloody and oftentimes unnecessary, led to great innovations that became central to the progression of humanity. World War II was no different and led to key inventions such as radar technology, as well as major innovation in areas such as communication and aircraft optimization. That said, however, not all of these projects were created equal, and there are an innumerable amount of failed inventions that are buried by the sands of time. One of these, of course, was called the Death Ray or Kugo Ray, an ultimately doomed project that was taken very seriously by the Japanese until the war was over. Rooted in credibility, the initial premise for a so-called death ray was first coined by Nikola Tesla, who conducted multiple experiments all based around what he intended to be a defensive weapon that would be able to shoot down hundreds of planes at a distance of 300 kilometers away. He also claimed that with enough energy, any country, no matter how large or small, could create a wall of power that would make it impregnable against small armies, aeroplanes, and other means of attack. After presenting his thesis to the League of Nations, and then to the leading powers of Western democracy sometime around 1934, he was flat out rejected, as they did not believe it possible to produce the enormous amounts of energy needed to even begin to undertake a project like the one Tesla was proposing. Tesla, however, still sparked some curiosity throughout the US media, and when articles about what he called this peace race surfaced on the New York Times and New York Sun, it caught the attention of Japanese correspondents in the United States, who then rewrote the articles and published it in Japan, where it gained a lot of public attention. It remained in the public view all the way up until the late 1930s where Japan was preparing for war with America and was then actually commissioned to be built by Japan's best physicists as the Imperial Army were hoping to gain the upper hand in America before the war had even started. Inspired by Tesla, the goal of the Japanese was to create a magnetron that would emit a high-powered beam intended to be able to cause both major psychological and physical problems to masses of enemy soldiers, which would then, the Japanese hoped, lead to death. They also believed that through this same principle, they would be able to stop internal combustion engines from working, therefore theoretically being able to down enemy planes without so much as a single shot. The Japanese government was extremely pleased with the potential of the project, and so they decided to funnel 2 million yen into it, which was around 500,000 US dollars in 1940. The project was then codenamed Kugo, and trials went ahead right away. At first, their death ray experiments at a range of around 80 inches away was able to cause stationary rabbits, groundhogs and monkeys lung bleeding, and at a range any closer than that could destroy brain cells in animals. They also had minor successes with stopping exposed engines from working with the death ray. However, if the engine was even slightly protected by a hub of some sort, it wasn't able to penetrate. After five and a half years of trials and testing, the furthest the Japanese got was killing a rabbit in a cage after 10 minutes at a distance of 30 meters or 100 feet. A caged groundhog took twice as long to die. It was evident that this project would at the time in 1945 have no use on the battlefield, as soldiers were always moving and plane engines were protected. With that said, the Japanese still had drawn up plans in 1945 to continue innovation of the death ray. However, this point of course was never reached as Japan capitulated on the 2nd of December 1945. So what do you all think? Tesla's idea of a peace ray was pretty much converted into that of a death ray by the Japanese, and even the Nazis dabbled in making something similar. However, most of the research was lost in the latter parts of the war. Do you think that with enough time this project could have ever developed into something big and replaced the nuke, or was it always doomed to flop? As per usual, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And just before you go guys, if you are enjoying the channel, are enjoying these types of videos, please do check out my Patreon. We're trying to do three videos a week now and most of these videos are demonetized and are heavily reduced in their monetization because YouTube isn't really a big fan of history and stuff like that. So we don't really make much on this channel. It's more so a passion project. And if you want to contribute to our passion project, which we're only going to keep growing, and do some exciting things with in the future, then please do check out the link in the description below. Anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new.